Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm going to officially open the webinar. Um, we were just chatting here for the first couple of minutes. So we just wanted to welcome our fabulous presenters. Irene McCormick is joining us. Louis Van Amstel is here. And Trisha Murphy Madden is here. I'm Sarah Cooperman. I'm the CEO of SCW Fitness. I've got wonderful staff involved. Sean Senegan is leading our charge with our creative department. And we also have now, Adam, I hope I pronounce this. Adam Budakavali, how'd I do? That's pretty good. I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah. They're help, helping to monitor this. They're helping to make sure that everybody that comes on is actually muted and their camera is off. And again, that's because of bandwidth that we want their cameras off and that we've muted you. But if you move your mouse and you look down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a green box. Don't click it but you will see a green box. And at the bottom of the screen to the right of there, it says chat. And that's you, where you can click. You can click on chat, tell us where you're from. We love to hear where you're from, type it in. The message box opens up on the right at the bottom and you can type us a question. So if something we talk about, we're trying to limit our webinars to about 45 minutes each. If you come up with a question that you think we need to stay focused on, um, we're happy to answer it. We're trying to create a balance of creating a community as well as answering questions that'll help you advance as a fit fitness professional in this pandemic era that we're living in. This is completely unprecedented. We've never had a time in our history where the government has gotten involved to, to legislatively create an ordinance that will oh mandate us shutting down our health clubs. And that's something that we have to deal with. So we're trying as fast as we can to upskill ourselves on virtual ways and streaming ways to connect with people. So I put together about five questions, not a lot, might be too many, but we're gonna we're just gonna hit it hard and we're gonna start. Um, the first question is, how are we supposed to integrate online training while still correcting posture and alignment, while also addressing the building of a community that group fitness naturally supplies? So, how do we train these people? And Trisha, I'm gonna hit you up first on this since you just left an eight hour training, but how do we physically connect with our people, tell them about their posture and alignment while still trying to make them feel comfortable in the community and, and build that atmosphere of collective support? Great question. I think that this is now the time for you to know what your skill set is, okay? So if you've been lingering and waiting to learn to become a better communicator, to be able to verbally, not just visually, teach people how to move well in their bodies, it is now the best invitation possible from the universe to get better at that. that we're all good at certain things, but if you can't communicate in a way, if you don't have a cueing hierarchy or you don't have a system by which you communicate alignment to people, whether in person or online or in their ear on a telephone, you need to build that now. Now is the time to get better at that skill set. That would be my first suggestion. My second suggestion would be to think about some form of system if they can't see you, right? If they're laying on the floor doing core work and they can't see your Zoom screen, you're going to have to figure out different ways in which you can communicate that to them. So one of the things that we do in our industry is we teach people about the value of vis visualization. And right now you're gonna to have to tune in to how you can communicate through story what their body should look like. They're gonna to need to be able to feel it in different ways. So those are sort of the two, two things that I come to top of mind for me is just A, this is a skill set we're gonna to need to improve on it. And B, that's my tip is visualization is everything right now as you start teaching exercise online. Thank you very much. I'm going to hit up Louie because I know Louie has a different opinion on this, this time we're living through. So Louie, can you share with us, how are we going to build that community through a virtual system like Trisha just talked about? 
and still maintain connections with our with our instructors and with our students. The whole thing is really cool. And Sarah, you're breaking up, so I don't know if you just finished talking. Louie, I think that we might not have the strongest Wi-Fi connection with you. No, exactly. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yes, we can uh -huh. hear you now. Okay, you well, so. Okay, it's a little hard to hear you. I'm going to make a request. I'm going to ask yes, you. Yes, I would. I'm going to ask you, please, to talk to the people in your household and ask, ask them to turn off the TVs and turn off their computers so you can absorb and use all the Wi Fi. Kids, is, turn off your Wi Fi. Are kids? I know, kids. <laughs> It's his husband. I'm telling you now. Okay, so we're going to scoot while you do that, Louie, because you're kind of your screen is kind of frozen. Um, Irene, share with us your opinion on this. We were chatting with this. Um, Go to someone else. Okay, Irene, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. So I am so excited to hear Trisha not only give practical suggestions with visual cueing and, and, you know, all the ways in which we can communicate to our members. It will require that our members and our clients understand what we're saying to them. So when Tricia was talking a little bit about, you know, now is the call from the universe to get the skill set, the education that people, that fitness professionals need, if they want to be able to do that, includes workshops about coaching. It includes workshops about member connections, psychology, and just emotional connections because the people that are gr gr joining us right now virtually for exercise and workouts are likely people who have been exercising. We're probably not getting a lot of people right now online that haven't been exercising, right? Wouldn't you agree that seems relatively reasonable? So hopefully they're joining us or somebody based on a lot of things, but one would be rapport. And your ability to re develop relationships with your members and your clients in and out of the, of the workout is so critical because that is how you ensure that physical component, Sarah, that you were asking. How do we ensure safety? Because literally the only times I've seen critical issues in fitness classes is when you're talking about a cardiovascular episode. So coaching and cueing for those corrections virtually the way I know that Trisha has been sharing she's doing right now, it's going to be really effective, but learning how to connect with people authentically, come to workshops in 2020 to learn how to do that. If that, that's not a skill set you have right now. And I think that's very valuable, Irene. I found that with our certifications, um, we do online certifications at SCW and I believe in online training because I have four kids and when my kids were younger, I mean, even now with my, with my kids, I've got to be places and I can't give up eight hours of a chunk of time. That's very difficult for me to do. So if I can get a piece here and a piece there and a piece somewhere else, putting it all together on my timeline, I love it. But SCW, I, I wholeheartedly, and the S of SCW is Sarah, I believe in live training. So if you take an online course, you get the live course free at Amania. But we're fortunate enough that we offer eight venues. So that's a little unique, but we do believe in those live trainings. Uh, Louie, let's give you a shot here. How are you doing with your bandwidth, babe? I am good. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. I was on the wrong email or a wrong internet anyway. Um, so... I only heard half from both you, Irene, and Tricia. Uh, but when Sarah and I talked yesterday about me joining uh, the team, um, I had another uh, opinion, the devil's advocate. Uh, the thing is, as a dancer and being in the fitness industry now for 10 years and doing the research on how can we incorporate dance and fitness into one, that it's indeed hard if you looking at a screen at a robot, how can you correct someone? Or how can you see if someone is equipped by the end of such day 
to go to a gym and actually teach a proper class uh, because we have, as instructors, we have the lives of the members in our hands. That group fitness room is the heartbeat of the gym. Whether you do yoga, dance fitness, group fitness, it doesn't matter. We're here to really provide good quality instruction. So we don't know when looking at a screen and see all the lovely faces saying, yes, we understand this was a great day, but then we say goodbye and don't know. Now that same thing happens in live uh, certifications. We don't really know. So it's all really a balancing act. And I think it's important as group fitness instructors, and we have 280 people right now watching and listening. If you do your due diligence and every two years get your CECs, come to uh, invest in yourself and come to the conventions, then you get to still build that community, that community of being with your friend, your colleague in the same room. Because to me, nothing beats being in one room with 40, 50 like-minded people and you can discuss things and you can share your emotions, which you cannot share through a screen. I mean, we can cry, we can laugh, but you can't really have that in-depth conversa conversation. And I think, Louis, what you're saying is extremely valuable because if you look what's going on with Zoom, um, and you, not just Zoom, but Skype and all and and Face and FaceTime and um, and Instagram and Facebook, everything that's going on right now, um, we're trying desperately to connect the health clubs. I can't connect with equipment because people don't have it in their home. I can't connect with the cardio machines because people don't have it in their home. The way they're maintaining their connections is offering classes online. And that's the value that group fitness does. That's the value. And I hope, I can only hope that that is going to escalate the importance of group fitness to the owners and the managers and the directors. because. And I feel like I'm on a soapbox, but we're important. And you yes. said it, Louis, we're the heart and the soul. Yeah, it's important. And what you just said is very important too. And we need to build a bridge between the disconnect between the decision makers at the gym and the group fitness coordinators and directors. Oftentimes, the directors and coordinators are not heard. So therefore, the owners think, well, the group fitness room, how can we really tell the cost per head of a group fitness room? Mm -hmm. And I think as a whole, all people um, that are on this webinar, whether you're a coordinator, a director, you need to fight for your group fitness instructors because they are the ones. That is the reason why America worldwide goes to the gym. They go straight to the group fitness room. And we're not sitting here, I know, uh, Trisha, your yoga, I'm dance fitness, but we're really here to represent group fitness. And I, I think this is so important. Thank you, Sarah, for doing this, that we all get to share our visions, I guess, with uh, how important it is that we go live. And I think, like you said, Sarah, when this is all over, I believe the group fitness room is going to be even more important spin, yoga, dance, fitness, it's all gonna be more important because people, those four walls are coming at everyone. Yes, and you know, one thing that's interesting, um, STW, uh, we distributed Les Mills um, in the Midwest territory for a decade, for 10 years. And we became experts on what the percentage was of the membership that was using group fitness. And the reality is, it's 15 to 25%. That's statistically what's going on in America. But we have to look, what is the percentage of the people that are actually showing up at the club? And we do believe that it is much higher. So Louie, I do think you're gripping onto that. And Trisha, although I know you teach yoga, I think you were doing a bar certification, weren't you? Yes, I was. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, so, well, I wanted to say I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to say one thing, which is I think 
when this all erupted, I, I'm based here in Seattle, and so we were sort of on the forefront of all the destruction. And I, <laughs> Sarah knows I called her in tears from the very beginning. What we saw immediately with small brands and large brands, where I've I've talked to group fitness directors of clubs with 60 clubs and and group fitness directors of two to three clubs. What we're finding is that the big brands who jumped in and tried to do corporate streaming did not succeed. Their clients would actually prefer to go to Les Mills or some of the bigger brands that are pre-designed and they're beautiful and the on-demand programming is so good. The reason that is, is they didn't go to their local clubs and ask the local club instructors to participate on the on-demand streaming. The local instructor is the one that has the community. It's not the national group fitness director that has a following in that community. It's the instructors in, in the thick of it, in the weeds. So here in Seattle, I come in and I teach it here at Denali Fitness twice a week. I teach bar. I'm not going to see people outside of Denali. We're offering classes to keep the community going that's here. But if we were to just bring in some Joe Blow that my, that my members don't know, why would they watch me and not go to Physique 57? Like there's, there's, I think what everyone's starting to see is the value of community and the only on-demand streaming that's really working right now that isn't big brand, Les Mills, Peloton, all of those things, because we can't really compete with that, are these independent instructors that have a following and the clubs who have been smart enough to pay these instructors for that talent. Our club here is still paying me to show up and teach to my community because those members are keeping their membership and keeping this business afloat. If they were to just bring in any willy nilly, it wouldn't be working. So I think we are immediately seeing that the people that build community are the ones that show up and teach in these classrooms each and every day. And all of you listening are those people. You do build your communities and you have the ability to help retain membership for the clubs the you're working on. The difficult thing is there are clubs that simply don't have the funds right now because memberships are bleeding out. Mm -hmm. The reality yeah. is, is they're bleeding out People are canceling right and left. I have a membership at the Y. And I sat here and I thought, I'm paying like 90 bucks for my monthly membership and I'm not going anywhere. And I got the form and I was like this close to canceling. And I thought, Sarah, I can't do that. You can't do that. But they're bleeding out. So the clubs, we're, I, I'm looking at this. Um, I, I'm looking at what's going on with the, with the chats. And people are like, how do I get paid? How do I get paid? You guys set up Venmo and open mm -hmm. your mouth and say to people, I am not getting paid right now. I need to send my kids to college someday. I need to put food on my table. Please, if you can Venmo me a, you know, bit, a, an amount for the class, please give me a donation. I sincerely appreciate it and pass on this link to, to others. And it's working. In some communities, it's working. Tricia, you're absolutely correct. It is the personal connection for me. For me, I have, um, Kristen is my favorite yoga instructor at Niyama Fitness in Wilmette, Illinois. Go and Google it, okay? She is fabulous. I go on, I can Venmo Kristen, I can give her 15 bucks, I take the yoga class in my basement. But Louie, to your point here, to your point here, I have to, I miss class on Thursday night. I miss class on today on Sunday, because I want to go somewhere. I yeah. want to be connected with my community. I want to. My husband and I take it together. I want to. I want to smell him. Ew. Okay, but I want that live connection. Hi. I know you, and and that's difficult. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Irene? I think that. I think Trisha's point was really interesting about the fact that there is a lot of options right now. If you go to Facebook or Instagram, there's a ton of stuff. And if you aren't already following some celebrity fitness person or have some already connection, you're exactly right. I'm not going to join a class by somebody I don't know, or I don't know what I'm going to get. It's kind of like the whole sub thing when people don't know what the consistency is going to be. So they don't tend to show up and that it comes down to consistency. One of the reasons that's a problem is because one, 
people don't have a member connection. And two, they don't know the instructor and therefore they're not confident that the consistency of the, of the experience is going to be good. And that's where consistent education is going to be really important if you want to stay competitive in this field. We've been so good at being cutting edge in our program and content. We do have to kind of sit back now and figure out now. Now, how do I, how do I expand? How do I get paid? What have I built? Yeah. And Bridget just commented that on her Facebook, she got messages. I, mean, I can't find her right now. It's her communities in Southwest Florida begged me to do online. They begged her and asked me how they can pay me. Yeah. Now I'm moving to Southwest Florida. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that is some of the stuff that's happening is because of that community. Go ahead, Can I say something about that? We have done the last two weeks, I have personally done a lot of virtual classes. And when you give things for free and you stick out your neck and the people in your community know and feel that you are sincerely giving back, they want to pay you. And I think that's why we have Venmo or the tip jar, or you can give people your email, uh, however you want to do it. But give back first and base it on you wanting to help people at home and not base it on how can I make money? Because I think, uh, hello, Miss Stylo. <laughs> um, I think what the people at home, the members that can go to the gym now feel, they feel the difference if someone is teaching a class virtually because they want to make money or because they do it, they want to give back. And to all the instructors that are on right now, when you give one class away for free, people will respect you. But if you right away go and want to make money, there is enough choice out there to have free classes that are good too. There are some bad ones, but good and, ones. And one of our, one of our um, people on the call, they gave away, Sid gave away free classes at the beginning, and she's going to start charging uh, next month. Um, Jen Schmidt, she asked for donations, and they, and she's getting it. Yeah. And that's, that's wonderful. S now, Sarah, Sarah, can I say one thing about that? I think it's imperative. I, I just wrote a blog on it a couple days ago, and the topic, this was the topic. I do think it's really important if you have a following at your facility. If you have a regular job where you go and teach classes here, I'm using this as an example because I'm sitting here at Denali. If you are paid regularly, please do talk to your club owners first before you go out on a limb and do this on your own. When I went to them and said, I think that I can, I can keep your membership a little bit going. Like I think you can get members to keep paying if they can keep taking my class, Jennifer's class, James's class. I think, I think you can help save your business and still pay your instructor something. So I guess I just want to say before you worry about getting donations and this and that and the other thing, do work with your club on an individual basis because even if they're growing broke, here's what's happening in Seattle. Health clubs are not going to be paying their rent, okay? Nobody's going to be paying their rent for these months mm -hmm. where we're out of commission. Their run rates, their run rates are too high. And so they want to keep enough membership going that they can keep their run rate level. And so if you are able to offer classes through your facility and they're able to take money and pay you even a portion, in some cases I'm getting 100% of pay, sometimes I'm getting less, it's still helping to keep the business going. The business is what's going to pay you in the end. It doesn't matter if you prove to your community you're valuable. If in the end you don't have a place to come back to and show them how amazing and how much they, like a bad boyfriend, they, how much they missed you. <laughs> then if the business is gone, you've got no job. So they may not be able to do that now. As of last Friday, a lot of gyms woke up to the reality that this wasn't a two week vacation, mm -hmm. that it's actually, they laid off their entire staffs. And, and we're seeing that across the board. They're realizing that this is a long-term issue. So they may not be able to let you live stream. They may not be able to set something up, but if you instigate this and ask them, and maybe you even provide solutions, they may be able to pay you and take care of the financial component. So it's not something you're doing. On top of that, the donations have, like, I can't tell you, I have lashes that are being, like someone donated a lash appointment to me 
for teaching the classes. Somebody donated, um, people have been making donations to me even though they know that Denali is actually still compensating me because they know it's a nominal thing and how much work and effort it is. So there, okay. I just wanna say there's a balance. And, and what's difficult is I'm getting a lot of questions, legal questions. What am I legally responsible for? Waivers of liability, informed consent forms. What is the music licensing? How, are, how does that work? Um, to be honest with you, the music licensing, we should legally, we shouldn't be playing music over, over Facebook, over Instagram, mm -hmm. over Venmo, I mean, pardon me, over Zoom, um, <laughs> Skype, we shouldn't be pl paying, playing the music because we're not licensed to play it, except if it's going under your license of a health club then most likely that is gonna be covered. But the reality is the way the world is, is operating right now, it's almost a free for all. When you talk about opening the clubs again, Tricia, that, that we're gonna to shift to how do we now integrate all this technology that's been dumped upon us into moving back, we also need to look at, is there going to be a club to move back to? Mm -hmm. And that's what the point that Tricia is bringing up. I do want to say that on Wednesday, on Wednesday at six, uh, uh, 7 p.m. East Coast time, 6 p.m. Midwest time, 5 p.m. Mountain time, and 4 p.m. Pacific time, we're doing a webinar on the stimulus package and its direct application to health clubs and, and boutique studios and independent instructors that are running their own uh, programming, whether you be a personal trainer or a group fitness instructor working on your own. Are we eligible for this? Are we eligible as an employee, as independent contractors? How does the owner manage this? Because it's devastating. We don't have the income coming in. Um, my, the person leading it, it's, I wish I could pretend like I'm not smiling, but it's my husband. And he's an expert on the Small Business Administration, the SBIC loans. He actually has been contacted constantly um, by senators, and he was instrumental in answering a lot of the questions surrounding the bill that just got passed last Wednesday. So he is coming and doing a webinar for us. He's doing one tomorrow for over 1,500 um, uh, uh, private equity uh, firms and lawyers, and it's probably going to end up being several thousand. But basically, I have tremendous personal influence, <laughs> and he's going to bless us with his presence on Wednesday. So I encourage you, tell your owners and managers to get in there and listen to this webinar. You're welcome to join as a group fitness department, but we need our owners and managers to get in there because we want a club to come home to. And this package is actually going to allow those owners to get loans of hundreds of thousands of dollars and not have to repay it when the loan comes due at the end of July, at the end of June. It's for two months, um, which is amazing. And that's going to keep us alive. And the whole idea behind this is the reality is in 2008 and 2009, you know, after the recession from 2007, the government was inundated with so much unemployment, so much unemployment that it, that it almost went bankrupt. And then the people never got off unemployment. So what the government is doing now is trying to stimulate the economy, help the small businesses and larger businesses, typically businesses with a location under 500 employees, but is trying to help these locations, give them money, give them hundreds of thousands of dollars to help with salaries and rent and utilities. That's it. Salaries, rent, and utilities. Help them for the two-month period and then so that they, we don't have to put people on unemployment. Um, and so I, I highly recommend Wednesday that you get your owners and managers to come. But you guys that are on this, um, Irene, Irene, think about this. How are we going to take this technology, this upskilling that we've all had to use like that we've all had to learn by the, by the as quick as we could, um, and I love the term pivoting, um, integrate this technology simply efficiently into our group exercise program. 
how can the clubs do it and how can we do it as independent instructors and trainers? I, you know, that question is so interesting because we already are seeing an influx of technology in, in our, in our studios. Now, I, as you know, I come from um, Orange Theory. I'm not, lo I'm no longer with that uh, boutique fitness program, but they are amazing at integrating technology and we're going to see more of that. And I'm really interested to see how the current situation is going to influence the need for people to connect more with good programs and content through technology because clearly if again there's another crisis because we don't know what the future holds and this is unprecedented nobody could have predicted this 10 days ago um, you know we want to be prepared fitness instructors and fitness professionals are the best at bouncing back we are resilient we always have been we make it work and I think this is just going to be another opportunity for us to come up with new ways to integrate existing technologies into our programming. Uh, Tricia, how do you think we're gonna be able to integrate this vast amount of knowledge that we've been forced to learn? <laughs> are we going to, are we just gonna go back to what we did before? No, absolutely not. What's gonna happen is that we have spent our entire industry, there's been two pockets of, there's been really three industries in recent times. There's been the boutique business, which Orange Theory, Hot Yoga, Peer Bars all fit into, those studio businesses that we always talk about. There's the traditional gym industry that a lot of us on this, on this um, call are in. And then there's been the on-demand industry, which is the Pelotons of, of what we do. So there's been online programming, there's been industry programming and boutique programming two of which have been live, one of which has been on demand. What's happening now is that we're learning to take part in that on-demand education. We have always been afraid of it. It's scared us. It's been, it's the member who comes in and says they got a Peloton and your heart sinks because you're like, ah, crap, my cycling class just shrunk by one. What's happened is we've spent our time living in fear and sort of looking away and not upskilling ourselves to their teaching capacity. Because when you watch a Peloton, if anybody's from Peloton, they'll, they'll be fine with me saying this, the Peloton instructor's skill set for communication is up here. And so I've kind of been screaming at the top of my lungs, stop being mad at the on-demand education that's so good. Stop being mad at the Uber of our industry and start, do, start figuring out how to match their skill set. So what's happening right now is so exciting. This is actually gonna be the best thing that ever happens to our industry because we are gonna learn to do this really, really well. We're learning at a rate in the past week, everyone's pivoting, adapting, adjusting, learning to mirror, learning to do things they've never done. But when we come back, when everything reopens, the good news is we've now, We've now proven that our customers both like us like this in Zoom and they like us in person. You think they're not missing us right now? You're, we're all, they miss us so much right now. But the fact that they've been able to experience us in their home now tells them that they can have bet the best of both worlds. So any health club that is now running on, on streaming classes should smartly be pivoting and figuring out how they can make their studio do this on a regular basis so that when their customer, Sally Jo, 35-year-old mom has three kids, now instead of being afraid of her getting a Peloton, you now have a cust an online customer who likes your content at home as well. So you can actually now service your customer both on in on-demand world and in person. So this is actually just a win for us. It sounds this like it's a, not right now, but this it is will a, be. This is a great win for us. And I don't, I want to encourage you not to be scared of it because we back, SCW back in October began to stream our certifications. I got, I'm a kind of a weirdo and I got very excited. I get very interested and excited by new, so you're laughing at me because you think this is not really water. Okay. <laughs> but it's, but I get very excited by this and we started streaming our certifications. We did our first streaming certification. We did two of them at Midwest Mania way back in October of 2019. We have streamed, we have trained this weekend alone over 200 instructors. Oh my God, I think it's over 300 actually. 
um, through our streaming certifications. But when I was at, at the manias, we actually are not getting fewer attendees in our, in our live certifications. We're actually getting more instructors in our live and supplementing with the streaming. So I want to encourage you guys, don't be frightened of that. But Louie, I want to ask you, you know, what do you think of this again? We got to deal with this technology and where is the connection really coming from? I think it's very important that we uh, do our homework. And I'm now talking as a crew, fit, crew fitness instructor, not as the LeBlast Fitness CEO. Um, because all that we are um, comparing Peloton, all these online are for people at home, they're members. So I think we have to make it really clear, are we talking about the members that go to the gym and their offerings online and live? Or are we talking group fitness instructors that have the opportunity to get their education online versus live? And like I said earlier, um, I believe in a balancing act and I hope that it will be a balancing act for all the group fitness instructors so that the group fitness instructors are not isolating themselves and only doing online certifications. And I would be hypocrite if I would not admit that even with LeBlast we're doing virtual certifications now because we are forced to stay like Trisha, like you mentioned, we got to stay with the times. So we do. But, and I love, and I want to make, give you a compliment, Sarah, because you are going live. You've gone live since last year, but you say to everyone, you can come to SCW and do it in life for free. So I really respect that. And everyone who hasn't gone, go and do it because it is a great offering that you can do your certification from a remote area in the middle of Timbuktu, you can get certified, but then you can actually go in person to any of the eight or whatever. Um, go to Seattle in person and take class with Trisha in person or with me or with Irene. Um, but I do believe and I want to stress that I hope that ACE, AFA, SCW, AEA, all these, the major group fitness certifications, that they're not going to cancel their life certifications because it's so much easier to make money when you are sitting at home while everyone else looks at a screen. And this is one thing what I'm afraid of. I am I'm not afraid of growth or change, but it's the intention of the companies. Why are they going live? And money should not be the number one reason. And that's why I want to be the devil's advocate that we all can sleep at night, that we do these certifications to truly give the people at home services that they can grow from and that we stay in touch with them, that we help them. And, and Louis, I have to commend you. This comes from a man who's on television constantly, okay? So he appreciates, obviously, virtual connections with people being on a, being on a TV show. Um, we found out kind of the hard way, you have to do the quote unquote bricks and clicks. You have to have live, and then you can also have something virtual. Um, at one point we decided what we were gonna do is not mail a physical brochure. What we were gonna do is just put everything online and just do things through email. And at that point, there wasn't even social media. So we were gonna go completely virtual and it fell flat. We have to do the physical brochure. People wanna to touch and feel and connect. And we had to do um, the virtual. And we are finding the same thing with our certifications. If we don't have that live connection, if we don't have a way for people to actually feel, touch, feel, smell our connections in our classes, then how are we going to get them to, to connect with us virtually? You can't just have that. You can't just have the clicks without the bricks. Um, I did get a great question from somebody who said, is there a cost-effective alternative to Zoom? And that's something that we, um, we have to think about. Um, I personally 
Obviously, we chose Zoom. We like it. We think it works really well. We went to a medium package with Zoom. We didn't go to the paying a fortune um, for our Zoom license, but we went a little bit above and it's working quite well. But we use Skype for our staff meetings, which is a free service. I've been on FaceTime webinars. I've been on several of them. They work fine as well. Um, Instagram, I know Yuri Rocket, who was on our webinar last, on our webinar Friday, he uses Instagram. He says it's simple and easy, he taught himself. If you at home are trying to learn things, these things, really try to think about doing it. Go on YouTube. You can find a video. I, if, I, if I can learn, trust me, you can learn. Irene, it looks I'll like you want to that. say, go ahead, Louie. No, I second what you say. I'm uh, the middle-aged, older demographic, and having millennials in our office and married to one, uh, don't judge me. Um, sometimes you feel like, oh, it just got to stay with the times, but, uh, and also we in our company, we use Google Hangout and works well too. Yeah. There's, there's several, um, if, if Sarah, if you'd like, I'll follow up. There's like three or four other companies that are changing what their requirements are. There's some really incredible, um, software arms that are now adapting to our industry in this moment. Can you so type it into the chat box here j just for, so people can take a peek at it, but we will follow up. She's like, yes, oh, I'll, oh. I, I'll, I have two of them, but the third one I just texted to ask the name to, because they're, they're decreasing the rate based on what all of you need as independents to compete with Zoom. So I'll definitely pull that one and make sure you everybody can see it. But yeah, there are options. Uh, something I wanted to let everybody know that we did uh, with our online education this weekend. Last weekend when we taught the certifications online, we taught the master class portions, the workout portions, live streamed so they'd really get the experience right here behind me. What we found is that there were just too many people with dial-up issues and that the sound and the movement were on a weird delay. So I actually went into studio and pre-filmed the workout. So about an hour of my workshop today was me moving all of them onto the Vimeo platform to see the class, but they were able to hear the music at a high enough quality that they were able to experience it fully. So if you really need the people that are participating in your workouts to experience the music and to experience the patterns of movements in the right pace, you really may need to consider Vimeo instead of live streaming. And you might find, especially if you're teaching to small communities, say you have an 18 person following, maybe you pre-film those and load them up to Vimeo. There's some, so there, are, there are other competitors to Vimeo that might be more affordable because if you're teaching something like dance and it's delayed, it's, it becomes hip hop, yeah. not, not the flow that you're looking for. And so- I, um, I hate to interrupt you, but we do, we keep getting questions on the 40 minutes in Zoom is free. They limit it to 40 minutes if you have the free version. Um, for those of you who don't know what Vimeo is, and Tricia, pardon me for just kind of clarifying this, Vimeo is you have to pay for the platform, kind of like you might if you want to host webinars or host classes that are longer than 40 minutes. You're going to have to pay. It's like $15 a month. It's very <laughs> minimal for, for Zoom. Um, Vimeo is a private platform. You can post things to YouTube, but YouTube may then if you post it on some, if you post it someplace, it's open to everyone. I love the little jazz hands. Thank you, Tricia. Um, but it is open to everyone. Vimeo is not that expensive. You have to watch it. And that means that they won't get ads from quote unquote your competitors. So that's something to consider as well, but you can post things on YouTube. Typically YouTube or Facebook will shut things down when something is reposted. It's not so much the original, it's when it's reposted and sent to somebody, and that's something to consider. Um, now, we are really, I can't believe that we like have one minute left, and I'm just, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Sarah, can I, can I say one quick thing yes, to answer please. a lot of those questions I've been looking at 
um, there's a bunch of music questions. I want to point out that um, several of Sarah's music partners uh, have very quickly adapted and they're providing, I don't know if you've talked about this in other uh, webinars, but a lot of your partners have already created very, very discounted rates for live streaming classes that the music would be legal. So um, I believe Yes has done it now, Muscle, uh, muscle Mixes, um, several of your Empower posts. Empower Music. Empower Music has done it. So um, don't be afraid to spend the 20 bucks. Remember, if you have a good music experience and you know you're not going to be sued in the end, maybe that's a value to you. And so many of these companies want to serve you. They want to take care of you and support you in this process. So it's worth the investment in my mind. We're going to try to do a webinar that focuses on licensing issues, liability issues, and some of the technology issues. I think that that would be great for us. Last question. I, it, I know we're one minute over, but I'm going over because... We have nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> You're all there. Okay. Yep. Grab your water or whatever you feel is necessary. And when and how can we have our health clubs understand and appreciate the value of group exercise? Mm -hmm. I think we should end with that. Mm -hmm. I, absolutely. Go, maybe, go for it, Louis. Maybe I'm upsetting a few people with this, but I'm not here to do that. Um, so coming as a dancer, um, so yes, Dance with the Stars was my life. I had no idea that 10 years later I'd be sitting here as a fitness professional, um, but I'm excited too. So I have been looking and presenting at really, now someone is at my door. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm good, I'm good. So there's a disconnect. And I've realized that talking to a lot of, even you, some of you guys, um, that there's a disconnect. The decision makers, managers all go to URSA. The group fitness instructors and coordinators, directors go to Idea World. They don't communicate. Mania. <laughs> well, okay, SW Mania, everyone else, but those are the, the two big ones. And I think that is what the fitness industry needs to do. So I think you, Sarah, representing SCW, NATO, ACSM, IDEA, URSA, they need to start working together from the top so that there is a better communication between the decision makers and the group fitness instructors, coordinators, and directors. These three together, they oftentimes, they are not heard. So, and they keep going to SCW and IDEA, getting better and better, but what needs to happen is that the Bobos are listening to the people they employ to say this group fitness room is your heartbeat. Give it the attention it deserves. And I believe, truly believe that question number five will be, will be no question anymore in the next five years. And I, I, I totally agree with you on this. I'm reading this. People are saying, thank you, Louie. Amen. I totally agree. Oh, wow. You know, it's, it's, it, we all feel this way. Um, at SCW, we're, the, we're regional. You're absolutely right. IDEA is one big event with 300 vendors, half of them being food. Everybody, they finish their workouts and running to get a Chobani, right? Love it. Love the expo. Love the expo for URSA. SCW, we do education. We opened up 50 different sessions for owners, managers, and directors. And it's under the same roof of Mania in the same hotel right down the hallway. So these owners and managers, trust me, I'm one of them, owners and managers, shake them and drag them over and see what's going on. I was astounded. One of my friends who owns, he owns several health clubs, walked over with me at the last conference. We were walking past one of the activity rooms. People were doing um, uh, bench presses with hand weights on a step. And he's like, what are they doing? He never even looked at a group fitness class. But at least at Mania, he could walk past. Then he started poking his nose into all the rooms. And I was like, thank goodness. 
So we have simultaneously under one roof, under one hotel at one event, we have these three rooms of, for owners, managers, and directors on marketing, um, financial, um, social media, sales, retention, all the important lectures, 50 different lectures, along with almost 200 different sessions that, that we do as activity people. LeBlast is there. Far Above, thank you, Tricia is there. Irene is there with, with Water Rower. Mm -hmm. So we you know, come and see what the heck we do. Because you're right, Louie, we're bringing them in. We're bringing them in. And we're the ones that are retaining those memberships right now when we don't have the equipment, we don't have the machines, I don't have a massage table. It's, it's our group fitness. And, and um, Tricia, you're right. Let's go talk to our owners and managers. Continue to pay us. We'll help you retain the memberships. And there's, and there's, several, Sarah, different, sorry, there's no. several different models around that um, that you can look at for how you can help your gyms generate money. We do know as of today, it does look like all of us are going to be closed down until the 30th of April. So when we look at this full month, please don't rush to decision. I want to contemplate, work with your club owners, really talk about the long-term ramifications of what you're doing. Here's the thing. One of the ways to make them value you more is just give them solutions now. Mm -hmm. Show them your brilliant mind. Show them that you're more than the eight push-ups you can do in, in 20 seconds. This is your time to prove to them why you're more valuable than you ever were, that you're more valuable to anything else that happens in that health club. So, but look at the four models for, for how to generate revenue. Think, think it through. Treat it as a business plan for the next month and you'll be surprised at what happens in the end. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna ask Louie to do a, just a little closing and Irene to do a little closing and then I promise I will let you go back to your family, Adam, who's. Adam and Sean, who are helping you run the webinar. Louis, please. I just, I just want to add to uh, what Trisha is saying, which is brilliant. This is the time to educate yourself, not only as a fitness instructor, but the legal side, how you can uh, survive the next month online. How can you get your music better? How can you get a better room that you can get more people? But also, how can you market yourself better? Because it is true what Trish is saying. If you connect yourself to the business owner that you work for, then they will respect you more. And in the future, they will listen to you more. So if you come up with solutions right now, that means they will listen to you. They don't want to hear you complain. They want to hear you come up with solutions. And, and I'm a total believer on that. And group fitness instructors, Focus on when we come back, what do you want? How are you gonna do it? And think holistic, think not only the group fitness room, but think all the aspects beyond that. Market yourself. Thank you guys for listening. Sarah, thank you for having me. And Trisha, Irene, I love you guys. Okay, and Irene, can you, uh, can you give us a little yes. sign off here? So, yes, very quickly. Um, so the question has to do with when and how can we have our health clubs understand and appreciate the value of group fitness. And I have two points. One is I, I really hope that consumers of fitness really start to realize that when they connect with an instructor or a trainer or a program, that wasn't that didn't happen just by a wish. I mean, we've worked hard to create content that people really can value and really can get results-based training from. And I think people are starting to struggle at home figuring out, how do I do that? I mean, can I just run up the stairs and do some push-ups? Will it feel the same as my workout at, you know, City Row or wherever I go? And I think they're starting, I hope they're starting to realize, wow, I really am paying for value. And secondly, I think we might see a new category of training. We might see live, we might see classes, and we might see virtual. That may be something that is really, I see that. Wonderful. And the last thing I want to leave you guys with, I do thank you. We've gone almost <laughs> 10 minutes over, but this is a good time for you guys at home upskill yourself, get on a streaming certification. SCW's got it. It's scwfit.com forward slash 
live stream, one word. Louis, tell us when your LeBlast certification is going to be, please. Oh, thank you. Next week, Saturday, uh, Sunday, April 5th, LeBlast Fitness live stream certification. I'm doing that one myself, and I'm very excited about it, even um, though it's my first one. I'm very excited about it. It's like coming, going back on TV. But also, I would like to say every weekday, Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m., 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, free LeBlast virtual classes. Anyone? And, wow. What's the website, dear? LeBlastFitness.com? There you go. Yes. All right. I'm typing it into the chat, everybody. You got it. And um, uh, what I would like to do is also, I, for some reason, Adam, I'm going to ask you to type it in for me. I don't know why it's going private for me. Let me see if I can do um, uh, everyone publicly. Let me see. I think I got it here. There you go. It's not working. All right. Thank you for doing that. Um, Trisha, what is your bar above? I believe you're doing a bar above soon. We are offering in the month of April, we've, we've changed all of our in-person trainings to live streaming. And of course, we're offering any person who takes the live stream and instead of in-person, not only gets to take it with me over the weekend. So each and every weekend this month, I'll be right here at Denali Fitness with my robot camera teaching the education, but you also get to do it in person with your local master trainer. We also have all the master trainers participating. So they're the panelists. They answer questions all day and make it really fun and invigorating. And we will be back to doing in-person trainings at SCWs the rest of the year. So look for us there. I also just wanted to say several of you are asking me about the four business models. I write business blog posts on fitness topics all the time and this was my latest blog. So it's just Trisha Murphy Madden, all one word under blogs. The blog was to free or not to free. That is the question. And Trisha, <laughs> would, you be, would you be okay with us republishing that in the SCW newsletter? Absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful. So we will include that. We'll include a waiver of liability. We'll include some information also on music sources. Irene, we're hoping to have you very soon at um, doing your foam rolling certification for SCW. We're also looking not only at the traditional foam rollers, but vibrating up, right. vibrating also um, Irene is a very well-educated woman. What do you have your master's degree in? Exercise physiology. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. Okay. Here we go. I, can, I can count to eight backwards. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. We will see you Wednesday night. Tell your owners to join us. We love you, SCW. Yay. We love, love SCW. You, we love you, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, Bye. See. Bye. Yeah, <laughs>